Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're going to make a DIY battery backup. What's going on guys? Devin for Reef Teats. Um, now the water box has been running for about 6-7 months now and I realized I don't even have a battery backup on it yet. Now I have made a few different versions just in the past and decided to whip up a new one. So I can have the MP60s on battery backup, the power goes out, we're still going to have flow and it's going to make sure it's oxygenation and make sure the fish and everything else survive that extended power outage. Now to build this, I went with two 22 amp hour batteries. Basically, the more the amp hours, the more runtime you're going to get out of them. Now when selecting batteries, it is important to make sure you guys go with sealed lead acid. Um, a regular car battery, it actually vents out and you don't want any of those fumes from charging and stuff in your house. So make sure you go with kind of a UPS battery which would be a sealed lead acid. Um, so with these, we got two 22 amp hour batteries. Now I wired these in parallel, which means it's gonna double the amp hours. So if they're in series, it would double the voltage. So if I went negative, positive, negative, positive, kind of chain them along and each time it would double it. So that would make it 24 volts at 22 amp hours. But since we have it in parallel, which means negative to negative, positive to positive, um, the voltage stays the same, but it doubles the amp hours. So this setup gives us 44 hours of runtime which should be able to run two of my MP60s for at least 24 hours. Uh, now the other part of this is just like a battery maintainer or a trickle charger. And again, this is another one I got off Amazon, fairly inexpensive, 20, 25 bucks, something like that. And what this is gonna do is just slowly trickle charge the batteries and make sure they're always topped off. That way when the power actually does go out and the power has kick over to the battery backups, they're always fully charged, ready to roll. Uh, now the other part of this, the kind of connector you use is gonna depend on which power heads you have. Um, these, I believe they're around two and a half mil. They're fairly tiny. Uh, these are the ones that work with the Ecotec drivers. Now, with these, Ecotec actually does sell them for about five bucks with a fuse in line, so super simple solution. Um, if you wanted to run something like an M1, L2 type of deal, you do need a voltage booster. Uh, now this one is made by Ecotec and this boosts it from 12 volts to 24 volts. Um, so I just cut off the end and wired on my own connectors. I think for now though, we're just gonna hook up the two power heads. So to actually wire this up, um, all I did is I went negative, negative, positive, positive. And for where I'm drawing power, I put the positive on one battery and the negative connectors on the other battery. And I did this just to make sure the charging circuit, everything is kind of pulling from both of them equally. That's one thing I tend to do. So really, really easy to build and really could save your tank, especially those extended power outages. So if you don't have one, I mean, if you want a simple solution, you could just buy a pre-made one. I know Ecotec, Icecap, a few different companies make them, but it really is pretty easy in very few parts to just DIY one. So let's get this baby installed and test it out. Now I stack mine vertically just because it's a little more space efficient inside the back of my cabinet. So incredibly easy install, slide that into the back. So we plug in the battery maintainer, we can see the charge light on it and we know things are working. And the only step left is to connect the battery back up to the drivers. Now I'll give it a quick test if when the power goes out, so I'll unplug the power and you can see it instantly kicks over to battery backup. Um, so this is really key to making sure there's flow, there's oxygen, and it's gonna help save everything in your tank. So as you guys can see, that is an incredibly easy DIY that really could save your tank. I mean, number one, you should have a heater controller. Number two, I think you should have a battery backup. Whether you buy a pre-made one or a DIY one, very easy to do, by the way. Um, very important kind of long-term tank survival. Now, if you do wanna use the exact same parts and the exact same build that I did, I will throw my Amazon affiliate links in the description, so feel free to use those and thank you. As always guys, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button for new, make sure you subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.